God wants you to be a second-class citizen. Let me say these couple things. So I am appalled by the deep and lethal misogyny I see expressed across the culture. I wouldn't want to quarantine the crazy to hip-hop. Hip-hop, in one sense, does us the service of being explicit and articulate about its rage, although misplaced against women, where other sectors of the culture don't do so. And ultimately, I think what we have to wrestle with is that these images that are degrading uh, certainly are reflected in hip-hop, but did not begin there. Look at the self-critique. Lauren Hill said, even after all my logic and my theory, I had an MF, so you ignorant niggas here, right? If you think about Tupac Shakur, somebody wake me, I'm dreaming. I started as a seed, the semen, swimming upstream, planted in the womb while screaming. On the top was my pops, my mama hollering, stop, from a single drop. This is what they got? Not to disrespect my people, but my papa was a loser. Only plan he had for mama was the blanker and abuser. And even as a seed, I could see his plan for me, stranded on welfare, another broken family. I mean, listen to the cry. Even Master P said he was unenlightened, but I think he was enlightened when he wrote the lyrics. I don't own no planes. I don't own no boats. I don't ship no dope from coast to coast. I'm telling you that even in the mouths of young, evolving artists like Mr. Banner from Mississippi, Mr. Miller from Louisiana, they are represented in Katrina's misery. The country cannot come to their rescue to take them from rooftops, but want to now indict them for the language they use in the aftermath of being abandoned. I say that's a metaphor for what America has done. And thank God for hip hop at its best. At its best, hip hop has allowed the expression of degraded, marginalized, yes, mostly young black men, who often see their expanse and their opportunity at the expense of women, but that's no different than that case in the black church or in American institutions of politics. I think we have to confront it. I think we cannot limit it to African-American youth. And I think we have to be honest about the way in which this music, at its best, mind you, has allowed the expression of young people who have been duly, who have failed to be duly recognized, and as a result of that, have little recourse except to use the language, the metaphors, the similes, the analogy, and the beautiful vernacular at hand. So as I end, I think that what we must do is to constantly pay attention to the self-critical impulses within the culture itself. How come it is, why is it, that Talib Kweli, these cats drink champagne, toast death and pain like slaves on a ship, brag about who got the flyest chain? Why isn't that music selling? Now, some people say this. Well, the decline in music sales among hip-hop artists proves that the American public is through with them. Well, if that's the case, you're losing the argument because the so-called positive rappers in hip-hop are even further behind. So what is the public saying there? When a good movie like Talk To Me comes out, all the people who clamor for positive expression, how come they didn't go see that film? I think the crocodile, the crocodile tears of people who claim to want edifying art is problematic because I don't want edifying art, I want complex art. It's not positive versus negative. Some people think that if I speak in defense of gay and lesbian people within the ecclesiastical context, theologically, that's negative. So I could never rest upon negative versus positive. What about Dr. Dr. Dyson? Let me, let me end here. Okay, let me end here. Let me, say, let me end by saying this then. I think that hip-hop culture at its best is a necessary expression of degraded, demoralized young people who find the cultural expression of their identities in a culture that is fundamentally hostile to them as something they have to do. And I think what we should be about doing is interrogating and being more introspective about the practices that are negative in our own communities than join with hip-hop to clean up across the board the negativity that we find there. Okay. All right. I want to thank the, um, the witnesses. I've heard a, a lot of testimony, and let me just be real clear as I stated at the, at the opening of this hearing. We're not here to indict hip-hop, nor are we here to indict hip-hop artists. Right. I, for one, am very proud of the hip-hop genre. I know where it began. I know what it has become. I am proud of some of the things that it's done. It's created opportunities for young minority, African-American men and women mm -hmm. to emerge from the depths of the ghetto uh, to become icons in the corporate world. It's created thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of jobs for people who are able to express their gifts uh, in this competitive capitalistic society. 
I um, find that it is an art form. However, given all that, I know that there is a problem, a deep-seated, deeply rooted problem that exists in our community. And uh, a paycheck is not, um, the paycheck is not an excuse for being a part of that problem. You have to emerge, as all of us do, and as all of us did. Those of us who come from the same communities, the same kind of neighborhoods, we all aspire to get out of those neighborhoods. But there's a, a difference between exploiting the pain and the problem and being a solution to the problem. I'm looking today in this hearing for those, again, who are committed to becoming a part of the solution as opposed to being a part of the problem. We can agree, I agree, about the rage. I got rage. I'm a member of Congress. I still have deep-seated rage. Okay. But how is that rage channel? Am I supposed to take my rage and then spew it out in a counterproductive way so that I can get paid for by others to exploit my rage? Or do I have a overall a greater responsibility, a higher responsibility? to try to take my rage and be creative in, in their approach to becoming a part of the solution as opposed to being a part of the problem. Look, man, uh, let me, uh, brothers, I mean, uh, <laughs> let me say this. You can't justify to me the use of the word nigger because my slave master used it. It is no, there is no justification at all. My slave master raped my mama and my ancestors. I am not going to buy into that. All right. As a matter of fact, I can't condone that at all. All right. I have to deny that approach. I don't want to adopt the mores, the metaphors, the machinations, and the mentality of my slave master. I want to move myself and my community from uh, those kind of anchors. I don't want to ape and imitate my slave master. I want to create something more life-giving, something that affirms my dignity as, as opposed to affirming my death. Let me just ask a question here. Why, what is the responsibility for, to our community? and to this nation. What is the responsibility of the hip-hop art form? The artists, the uh, record owners, uh, the consumer. What is the responsibility? What is the shared responsibility uh, to, uh, in terms of to solve this particular, to solve these problems that we all agree are problems in our community? What, is, what are the responsibilities? Mr. Banning, uh, Mr. Crump, you want to start? Yes, I want to start by first of all saying all the philanthropy, all the things that I do in my neighborhood have nothing to do with David Banner as a rapper. Now, I, I represent the hip hop nation, but I can honestly say this is my opinion and my opinion only. I don't feel that it's any rapper's responsibility to do anything. I think it is your responsibility as a man, not the type of rapper you are, the type of man you are. I was that type of man when I was hustling. I was that type of man when I was a teacher. You go back and you look at my history, I have always cared about poor people and children. I do what I do because I am that type of man. It has nothing to do with my job. It is amazing to me that the burdens of the world are placed on young black men who don't have the power to move anything. We don't put that same 
responsibility on our president. We don't put that same responsibility on our congressmen. We don't put that same responsibility on our parents. We talk about children. The re It's not really about rap music. It's about the fact that we're having children when we're not prepared to raise them. So we point the finger back at somebody else. America, and I don't want to go into the war, but America, America talks about weapons of mass destruction. But when I look at it, I was like, don't we have the most receipts? And don't we have weapons of mass destruction? If we want to talk about weapons of mass destruction, let's get rid, let's get rid of ours. So in me saying that, of, of, of course, it's not right. But the thing is, when it comes to, when it comes down to it, it's still just a song. Arnold Schwarzenegger can be the governor of California, but in his movie, he killed half of Cambodia, then he went to Mars and blew up Mars, and then came back and killed, you know, some preachers. But it's fine, because he's a white man, and he's an actor. So that's okay. Let him be the governor. That's just fine. But if Snoop Dogg talks about the things that he actually sees in his community, whether fact or fiction, let's see what we can do to him. Mr. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, my thing is, I think it's a responsibility for us to preserve and prepare the future, which are our kids. We got to take a stand, and we can't just keep going where we at right now, not knowing that it, it is a tomorrow. I think as an artist, we only think about where we are now. We have no vision, and I think right now what we're seeing here today is we have to understand that knowledge is the most important thing and not education i think that education where we are education is so important for our people but once we apply the knowledge it's like right now what david bannon is saying i think once we get the knowledge we really can take what we're doing to the next level because i think we're all on the same mission because uh -huh. what he's saying but we also have to think about what we are doing and i think if we give our kids that vision we can make that change we got to stop saying I can't be the person that I used to be back in the days. I got to grow. And I want to figure out some kind of way to teach these kids to grow and realize that if I say the bad word, I'm a parent, my kids are not going to say that because I'm going to teach them to be better than me. And that's what I want to do. I want all my kids to understand one thing in life. Yeah, your daddy could only be an inspiration. But with my son, Romeo, he's going to college. He never cussed. He never made any profanity. His, his TV show was on Nickelodeon. He could be better than me. And that's what I want to instill into my kids. I also want to instill into them, let them know that you can live older than 25. You can live older than 30. We want to build this next generation to be better than us. And I think that's what Martin Luther King and all the other great people did for us. And I wanted to give that back to my kids and, and the people that's coming after me. Dr. Dyson, I, I, I must, I'm woefully over time, over my time, and I'm going to now recognize Mr. Chairman, if well, there's any consolation well, to you, I'm going to have to leave for a 2 o'clock meeting, yeah. so I'll yield my time to you, sir. Well, thank you. Well, Mr. Dyson, uh, I want to <laughs> thank you so very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Um, I, I think that, it's, look, there's no essential contradiction between what David Banner is saying and what uh, uh, Percy Miller is saying, that, that Master P and David Banner are both 